world is a scary place. There's conflict overseas, a murderer down the street, and something inside your head that no one quite understands. But you, you're safe. This little box you're watching right now is like the glass at the aquarium. You're looking at something very dangerous, but there's glass. So you're safe. Morbid curiosity has brought you here. Don't look away. It's much safer inside the screen. Bingo. Oh, okay. we got worms. What am I happy about, really? I don't know. What yeah. I, really, what, what am I, I happy, happy about, about right now? Well, you're happy about eating some worms and making $50,000. Growing up, I used to watch this stupid TV show called Fear Factor. I'm Joe Rogan, and this is Fear Factor. Contestants would be given challenges ranging from being near dangerous animals, eating something disgusting, or performing some kind of stunt. One of the stunts that forever stayed in my mind was the Trapped Under Ice Challenge. In order to replicate what it's like swimming under ice, there were layers of glass placed above and throughout the pool. The challenge here comes from your inability to see where the glass is when underwater. The glass would almost become invisible, watching the contestants become disorientated under the water as their oxygen slowly dwindled would make my palms sweat, to say the least. Thankfully on this show, the contestants were being supervised, and there were divers plus medical staff ready at all times to assist. At the end of the day, all the contestants went home and the host went on to be a great slash horrible person, depending on who you ask. Last year, a 40-year-old Russian lawyer from St. Petersburg made her way to Oradezh River near Vera, a village south of St. Petersburg, and intended to dip in the waters to mark Christian Orthodox Epiphany in a tradition followed annually by hundreds of thousands of Russian believers. Celebrated on January 19th, Epiphany commemorates the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan. To mark the event, many Orthodox Christians submerge themselves in holes of icy water. They may dip themselves up to three times. Many individuals hold the belief that water sanctified during the yearly ritual holds unique and therapeutic qualities. Some individuals venture into the frigid waters individually, while others frequently engage in collective festivities reminiscent of Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan. A gap had been meticulously carved through the robust ice, with the ambient temperature hovering around minus five degrees Celsius as Anna made her leap. Clad in a sleek black swimsuit, she solemnly made the sign of the cross before pinching her nose and plunging into the river with her husband and two children watching. Despite the efforts of her husband, who jumped in shortly after she was unable to be found, a rescue team of divers later attempted to find her body, but they were unsuccessful. It is one of the most dangerous rivers in the Leningrad region, and people drown in it every year, even in summer. This is almost entirely due to its incredibly strong current, often reported to be moving at a speed of three meters per second. Elsewhere in Vira village, near Gachina, in the Leningrad region, there was an official hole, with rescuers and paramedics on standby, as well as a wooden frame and steps to help people in and out of the water. The body eventually was found one kilometer away from the hole. The husband who jumped in after her is seriously lucky he wasn't swept away too, or their children would have lost both their parents in a matter of seconds and watched as they lost them.
Throughout history, humans have feared the advancements of technology. From Y2K. Falls' Y2K war room was quiet New Year's Eve as the new century rolled over without any power outages or other major problems. Or fiction like the Terminator. Oh, well, well, hi, I'm, I'm Kermit. I robot to 2001 Space Odyssey. Everything is going extremely well. The idea of some kind of robot or artificial intelligence uprising is not a new one. Elon Musk even talks about it pretty frequently, which is somewhat interesting considering this next video. I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. Elon Musk owns a company called Tesla. I'm fairly confident everyone knows this, so I won't go into it, but one of their cars has this incredibly cool feature. It has the ability to park itself. So we'll hit start and the car will just back right into the spot. It pulls up the backup camera, it pulls up the side cameras and see how close it gets. That's oh, pretty good. It's not a bad job. I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here. This in itself is quite impressive and I can imagine it would be quite helpful as the main difficulty people often have with driving is parking. But new technology often isn't without its flaws. The operator, Mr. Jean, who is employed as a professional lorry driver, recounted an incident involving his Tesla. While attempting to park the vehicle, he encountered an unexpected challenge when the brake pedal proved to be stuck or at least too difficult to press. Even activating the park mode failed to rectify the situation. Despite Mr. Jean's frantic efforts to apply the brakes, the car continued to accelerate unabated. Footage from a CCTV camera captured a fleeting illumination of the brake light yet the car's speed remained unaffected. The situation escalated as the car covered a distance of 1.2 kilometers, leading to the eventual bursting of one of the front tires. After traveling an additional 1.4 kilometers, the car finally ceased its motion, colliding with multiple other vehicles. This series of events resulted in the loss of two lives and injuries sustained by three individuals. Meanwhile, Mr. Jean himself suffered several fractured ribs, though he is presently in stable condition. In contrast, Tesla swiftly asserted that the driver had not engaged the brakes, a response commonly observed in similar circumstances. Law enforcement has verified that Mr. Jean was not operating the vehicle under the influence of alcohol or drugs, and the investigation into this incident remains ongoing. China is Tesla's second largest market, and the crash was among the top trending topics on the Weibo social media platform. And sadly, Tesla has faced claims of brake failure in China before. I'm a frog. <laughs> there was a woman found murdered in the middle of the road. Did you play Fortnite and then game end five women? This is every reporter's absolutely worst nightmare. fellow reporter uh, has died while, while out covering a shooting. Hey, isn't watching TV fun? Especially when you got delicious McDonald's hamburgers. Flying can be scary for some. I have a friend who finds it somehow relaxing as his fate is out of his hands. So there's nothing he can do to prevent what will happen. But on the other side of the coin, that's exactly why so many people find it horrifying. You are at the mercy of the pilot, the craft, and the elements. Although, statistically speaking, it's the safest form of transport. 
Fastening the cargo of a plane is incredibly important, as moving cargo can easily damage key components inside of the plane, sometimes making it impossible for a pilot to regain control. April 29th, 2013. A Boeing 747 arrived in Bagram, Afghanistan. Crew members who had flown on the aircraft to Bagram had noted that the cargo, which included five mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles weighing some 80 tons in all, had shifted during a previous flight and that a strap had broken, but they did not recognize that this indicated a serious problem, the staff said. Shortly after takeoff, when the plane was at an angle, the cargo shifted. NTSB members voted 4-0 to zero to accept the staff's conclusion that the probable cause for the April 29, 2013 crash of the National Air Cargo Flight at Bagram Air Base was at least one armored military vehicle which shifted as the plane took off, smashing into the aircraft's hydraulic systems and horizontal stabilizers, making it impossible to fly. NTSB investigators found that National Airlines, the parent company of National Air Cargo, had inadequate procedures in place for restraining special cargo loads such as the one it was moving in the flight that crashed and criticized its training of crew members. It also found that federal regulators failed to provide proper oversight of the carrier. The entire crew of seven people did not survive. Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? Uh, no, considering I'm Jewish. Oh. Did you get what you wanted for <laughs> Well, what'd you get for Annika? Nothing yet. It's not that time of the year yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. My name is Peter Agababi Palangin. Number two. My name's the same as his. <laughs> Game shows, thankfully, we don't see them as much these days. Growing up, these were shown almost back-to-back -back outside of peak viewing times. One of the most famous of them all, which still has success due to its charismatic host, Steve Harvey, is Family Feud. The show consists of two groups competing to win prizes by guessing what the most common answer to a subjective question is. One of the contestants' answers was sadly very telling. A jury in May convicted Timothy Bleefnik of murder, home invasion, and the use of a firearm to commit first-degree murder on the 23rd of February this year, killing Rebecca Bleefnik, his estranged wife. Her body was found by a family member inside her Quincy home after she failed to pick up her children from school. She had been shot multiple times. Three years before this, Timothy Bleefnik was on the game show Family Feud, and one moment in particular has been replayed over and over since this event occurred. People, what's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. Oh. <laughs> Not my mistake. Not my mistake. I love my wife. Authorities say in February of this year, Tim Bleeknick killed his wife, Becky. This phone shows searches for the phone. How to open my door with a crowbar. How to make a homemade pistol silencer. You researched this murder, Judge Robert Adrian said during sentencing. You planned this murder. You practiced this murder. You broke into her house and you shot her 14 times. Some of those shots were fired while she was lying on the ground. And you did all of that while your children were upstairs at your house, lying snug in their beds. 
and it's hard to think otherwise with this chilling video from his time on Family Feud now holding a sinister undertone. Whilst originally thought of as a bad joke, now holds weight for shadowing a grim reality. Where's your emergency? Uh, my house. Okay, what's the emergency? Uh, I just killed my mom and my sister. It's Pikachu! Go Pikachu! February 26th, Northwest London, 7.30 p.m. An incident occurred involving Miss Warris and an individual named Stanekse, who is described as a homeless Afghan immigrant. As Miss Warris was walking along Minute Avenue in Harleston, Stanekse, without any prior interaction or provocation, intentionally collided with her while riding his bicycle. Following this, he began to physically assault her by repeatedly striking her in the head and shoulders for about a minute. After this initial attack, Stanekse rode away from the scene. Feeling shocked and disoriented, Miss Juarez continued her journey towards her home. However, she soon noticed that Stanekse was approaching her once more. Walking to her menacingly, Stanekse proceeded to assault her once again, forcing Miss Juarez to shield her face and seek refuge at the nearby residence of Mr. Jarman. Upon reaching Mr. Jarman's house, Miss Juarez implored Stanekse to leave her alone, but he disregarded her pleas and subjected her to a third violent attack. Once safely inside Mr. Jarman's property, Miss Juarez tended to her injuries by wiping away blood from her nose and lip. Inside the house, Mr. Jarman verbally warned Stanexi, stating, You're on camera. Before closing the door. In a fit of rage, Stanexi directed his aggression towards a parked Toyota Prius on the street, causing substantial damage valued at 3,445 pounds. He then turned his attention to Mr. Jarman's front door. In this moment, he notices the camera and then breaks it with his bike lock before continuing to attack the door. While Miss Warris was initially attacked, she had been on the phone with a friend who promptly reached out to her father, Abdullah Khan. Mr. Khan swiftly arrived at the scene, bringing along his other daughter. Upon their arrival, Mr. Khan and his daughter confronted Stanekse outside the residence. In the course of this confrontation, Mr. Khan was subjected to another attack, during which he was forcibly pulled across the ground as well as struck multiple times. Following this altercation, Stanek Zay fled the scene. During this incident, Miss Warris's father sustained injuries, including a black eye and a broken tooth. I barely step out the house after this incident and have noticed myself how little I go out. I used to go out every weekend with my friends, but no longer feel I am able to do this. I do not feel safe outside of the house, said Miss Warris. Stanek Zay who issued his reserved apologies to the victims through his barrister, was sentenced to two and a half years in prison for the assaults and another 24 weeks for breaching a suspended sentence. 
The unpredictability of man is truly one of the most terrifying things in my opinion. We never know how close someone is to snapping. All we can do is hope that we're not there when it happens. Thank you for watching. Please tell me in the comments below which of these five videos was the most interesting to you. I release videos weekly, so make sure to subscribe before you go back to reality. And until next time, keep fearing the living.